Now, it's discussion time on the program this Wednesday morning as we invite you to join the conversation on our online stream on our webpage on www.adbntv.com forward slash live. You can also follow us across social media at ADBN underscore TV, but we do advise that you refrain from using inciting or inflammatory statements when you join the conversation. It's about objectivity to the discourse. Now, to broaden the scope of the discussion, joining us in the studio this morning is Comrade Richard Romanus. Good morning to you, Comrade. Good morning, B2. Good morning, my bro. Good morning uh, to you too, Comrade. Good to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's let's quickly delve into matters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's no news that um, August 1st is around the corner. Yeah. Uh, tensions are high. And just yesterday, uh, the IGP had meetings with uh, the, the... had a meeting with the protest planners uh, where they were asking to storm the streets while mm -hmm. he was against that, instead insisting that they remain in a confined... Um, uh, zone both in Lagos and in Abuja and other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. What is your reaction to this? What is my reaction as as to as if, to as to if I am in support of the protest or if there should not be protest at all? What, what, well, what well your reaction to the fact that mm -hmm. the IGP is asking the protesters to, to remain confined. in a confined space? Well, um, I don't know how the IGP intends to do that. Except the protesters are not the, are not serious themselves, but if they are, if they are, I don't see how um, a protest of that magnitude, you know, can be managed to a confined um, a confined location, you know. I think that um, uh, all we must continue to insist is that if they must protest, let it be a peaceful protest. Okay, well, uh, in, in a place like Lagos, um, the IGP offered them uh, the two parks there, the Freedom, the and, Freedom Peace and Peace Parks. While in Abuja, the protesters were the ones who requested for the uh, Eagle, Eagle Square. Square for them to use for protests. The minister of uh, FCT, uh, Barry Senor Sonwike, denied them the opportunity to use the Eagle Square. And on the other hand, conversely, in Lagos, the IGP is sending them to a confined space. There is a contrast. Is a, I, I mean, the protesters in Lagos and the ones in Abuja, don't they have a, a, a particular uh, stay, a say in what they want to do? Now, here is the thing. Eh? Here is the thing. Um, to be very clear, I am not in support of this protest. Yes, I am a young person. Yes, I am also affected by what is going on in this country. You know, but the truth about it is, I am not in support. I am I am not in support for three reasons. One of it is that where I come from, the state I come from, Cross River State, to this day we are yet to recover from the devastation that came with NSAS protest. To this day, the Tinapa Business and uh, International uh, Business Resort was destroyed. ICC. The ICC was destroyed. Most of our government ministries. Department and agencies were also destroyed. To this day, we are yet to recover from that. Two, in this government, in this government, I can tell you, I cannot remember, maybe the Jonathan administration, no other government has actually, has actually carried along young people in, 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 that, in, uh, in his administration like this government. No government. No government. Just three, two, two, three, four years ago, we were in this country where some people who were appointed, it is after the appointment they realized that those people are long dead. Have we forgotten? The very administration was appointing dead people into the administration. Old people. If they are not dead, they are already gone. They are already in their departure lodge. Yeah, they are already in their departure lodge. But in this administration, young people have had a fair share, you know. And totally, totally, the people who are calling for this protest, the likes of Sawari and Co. I have seen a video clip where he said the Buhari administration, the Buhari administration rode on his back to Asurok. I don't know if any of you have come by that kind of video clip. But it is true, that is what he said. But in this same country, in this same country, 
we had or we suffered unimaginable um, uh, 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 economic woes in this country. Hunger everywhere. Well, 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 it's it's it's. True. I'm coming. Okay. Uh, let me answer this. Way, that I'm I'm heading to somewhere. Okay. You know, the people that are calling for this protest, majorly from the north, all of a sudden we are now seeing Muslim imams, Muslim sheikhs everywhere. Instigating their people to protest. When their brother Buhari was in government, did they protest? Did they ask us to protest? Now, now it's having a coloration, and we're also seeing the Niger exactly Delta. Where, exactly, Niger Delta exactly, exactly where I'm going to. Exactly where I'm going to. The truth about it is that some people cannot claim to be more Nigerian than some of us or than some people in this country. Yes, some people cannot claim to be more Nigerian than some of us in this country. We are all equal. We are all serious super stakeholders in this country. Do you understand? Now, coming back to the issue of Eagle Square, that is exactly where I think that even the government too is getting it wrong. You cannot say don't protest. You cannot say we are, uh, the minister cannot say he is yet to see a formal um, request for the use of Eagle Square. Yet, yet, while he was in, is it somewhere in Buari? Buari or Pali, we saw women occupying Eagle Square. Can he show us where the, 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 formal, yeah, request. the formal request? Can he show us? The truth about it is that for any protest, every protest that goes out, it is either there is some kind of a counter protest, you know, that possibly would possibly lead to, lead to um, uh, 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 crisis. But anything short of that, sometimes most of these protests are peaceful. But like I said, I am not in support of this protest. Government must continue to dialogue. Look at what Wike, yes, or Wike is doing in um, in some parts of Abuja. Today he's in Kwali, next tomorrow he's in Bari, next tomorrow, the other day he's in... That is how to dialogue. The truth about it is that this administration, this administration, most of the government people, most of the people President Bola, Bola Metinubu has brought on board, I don't know if they are scared of interfacing with the people. In all fairness to, in all fairness to Beta Edu, the suspended minister for uh, of humanitarian affairs, yes. trust me, trust me, no matter what you think about that lady, eh? I am sure that even President Tinubu, in his heart of hearts, is missing that lady. Well, that was the only, so. that was the only lady that was promoting his renewed her, his renewed home agenda of this government. Was he was she waiting for 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 people uh used to plan a protest before she visits some of the places she visited? Better I do has been to La, is it Alausa? Better I do has been to virtually every place in this country, even in the north. Sometimes she addresses people in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the night. What was she doing? Even though nothing was coming on board, but yet she was communicating government programs and policies and, and to pushing people. The agenda now pushing the agenda of the government. Now on New Year Day, President Bola Metinibu had talked about his appointees and his cabinet that at the end of his first year in office, he might have to sack a few and reshake the cabinet. Now you've voiced your grievances with the lack of performances of some persons in the cabinet, highlighting some persons that ought to be missed. Do you think that the president at this point in time, looking at some of the requests from absolutely, the protesters, absolutely. should begin to rejig his cabinet? Absolutely. That is actually long overdue. It is long overdue. Long overdue. I ask you a question, uh, Bito. How many ministers in the President Bola Metinubu's administration do you even know? Do you even know their names? How many of them? How many have had media palace? How many of them have had media palace? Most of them already, I, I see most of them running Helter Skelter, trying to do what they are supposed to have done earlier. Now let's pick up on one of the details greeting what they ought to have done earlier. This morning, we hear that 80,000 applicants have applied for the 110 billion Naira National Youth Investment Fund, NYF. Now many are asking, is it that this money is just coming in or has it been on ground? You see, that is again the problem. Apart from that, just yesterday, we heard that the Niger Data Development Commission has also released or is planning to release, I don't know how 50, much. 50,000 now for 10,000 yeah, 10, years. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, these, some of these agencies have suddenly realized that these packages are actually there. All of a sudden, we now hear that NNPC, 
wants to recruit. I swear to God, who made me? I cannot remember the last time I heard of recruitments such. were made public in the NFC. Yes, I cannot remember. All of a sudden, they are now recruiting. All of a sudden, in the FCT, Minister Nyeso Wike has now realized that there is something that is supposed to be called a directorate of youth, what, 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 what. All of a sudden. Well, well, well isn't this part of, of what the protest planners are, have been calling for, have been agitating for, both online, offline, via right, right that or right is, that? Well, yes. That is the issue. That is the issue. So, so why, did we have to, why did the government have to wait until it got bad? So do you think that this renewed hope agenda is not being well carried by those around the president? Exactly why I was, I was about to answer your question when you talked about rejigging the cabinet. Truly. Truly. Because people in this government must be proud of the government. They must be proud of picking, communicating government policies and programs to people. Yes. I tell you the truth. Most people don't even know what the government is planning, what the government is putting together, what is supposed to be in the long term, what is supposed to be in the short term to people. Most people, if they know what the government is planning, at least give people hope. You're not telling anybody anything. So how do they know that? How do, how do, how do, how do people know that you are planning for these things? Well, well, well in contrast to, to uh, the, the previous administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, that was, um, well, some people might say he, he was a very silent president. He wasn't really communicating effectively with the masses. He wasn't talking to the masses. Members of his cabinet weren't doing any talking. Uh, perhaps the present regime, the current administration, is doing more than what the past administration did with regards to speaking with the public, giving out information, and ensuring that their thoughts are relayed to the, the, the masses out there. Don't you think so? Again, like I said, that is what I'm saying. I don't think so. Or maybe they are doing, but they are not doing much. That is what I am well, saying. Compared to the last administration, what? Of, uh, of, 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 of course, of course, of course. If we want to compare, compare this government, we shouldn't compare that uh, this administration to the last administration, for God's sake. That administration, I consider that, that administration a failure, for God's sake. So we should not compare this particular administration, especially because it is just one year into office. We cannot compare this administration to that administration. Now let's look at some intriguing developments in terms of what certain regions are saying. Now it might be related or unrelated to the funds disbursed for the Niger Delta youths at the stakeholders meeting yesterday. But uh, we're told earlier on on one of our papers, the Nigerian Tribune, that stakeholders in the Niger Delta and particularly Asari Dokubo has gone viral for comments he made insinuating that uh, youth from the region would not be a part of the protest while also suggesting that he would protest against the protesters. But in terms of the Niger Delta as where it stands, we also saw comments coming from the President of the Senate who talked about how much behind the region is and this administration is on track to deliver some capital projects in terms of the East-West Road and other critical infrastructures. Do you think that this is some of the indices that has assuaged part of the positions of stakeholders in the region. Again, again, talking about um, Senate President Godfrey Lakbabiu, I am his big fan. I've always been, you know. But I, I like to use this opportunity to advise that he slows down in his um, public comments too. That's the truth. He slows down on his public comment. In the last one month, Senate President Godfrey Lakbabiu has been in the news, negatively too. If you go to Twitter, he's, if, Senate, if the Senate president is not on the very top, he must be on part of the trends, on the trends on Twitter. And negatively too. Negatively too. For God's sake, these are leaders. Our leaders must know that truly things are hard in this country. If you cannot give anybody anything, kind words too. Well, don't you think that sometimes... There should be kind words. Please, I'm coming. Let okay. me answer this. Let me answer that question. Okay. You get it. You made mention of Asari Dokubo. Asari Dokubo, too, should also help us by you know, local parlance. They say, make it stand one place. A couple of months ago, we saw a video how he was complaining bitterly. That was a protest. That was a single-man protest. That video I saw where he was complaining that, oh, President Ahmed, Bola Ahmed, Tinubu is not doing well. Oh, the job people. Oh, the Niger Delta people are suffering. 
it was a protest. And all of a sudden, people are coming up to say, okay, let's not rather make it a single mass protest like you did. You want to march to the street. You are already saying a different thing entirely. You should stand one place. You should stay one place. You get. Then talking about talking about stakeholders in the Niger Delta, and for me, this should even go. Um, uh, this should be a cross board. You get. I want to continue to insist. Of course, they say the book falls on the table of Mr. President, but but as much as that is so. As much as that is so. Tomorrow is first, yeah. I expect that shortly after the emergency um, uh, sitting of the National Assembly, yes. I expect that Senate President Gosri Lakpabio, um, as of uh, as of rest speaker, um, uh, uh, Tanji Jinja Baz, should mandate members of the National Assembly to go back to their various constituencies. They ought to be regular interface with the people, for God's sake. Now, now another part of the government on the deployment of those greens that were sent to states. Most states have not come out to show actual disbursements. Do you think that's in that is of another, oversight? That is another members of the that national is a, that is another recipe to violence. If you remember during NSAS, what sparked the NSAS protest majorly was that people discovered that some of these grains, some of these things that were meant for them, were kept under the, the uh, in, exactly, exactly in warehouses. On, in warehouses. So, I think I would rather use this opportunity to advise most of them, National Assembly members. Of course, we were told that senators were given two trucks of um, fertilizers, House of Rep members were given one truck of fertilizers, governors, and all of that. If these things are still in warehouses, as a matter of fact, as they leave Abuja, most of them, show, all of them should leave Abuja today. Go back to their various constituencies and share these things. Sit there, supervise these things. Go there and try to solve people's problems. Bro, where we come from, our people don't need so much from us. Yes, where we come from. If you give, or if you, yeah, if you give somebody 5,000, 10,000, it goes a long way. It goes a long way for that person. Go back to your places and solve people's problems. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Won't, won't they be too scared to go back there, considering the, the heated policy that, that, with regards to the protest? That is a challenge. But, but if, some, some if, states if, are welcoming some. I've seen some from your states. If you, yeah, have begun sharing. Of course. Of course. Of course. Let me tell you, if you stay with the people, the people will recipro reciprocate. As a politician, yes. if you stay with the people, the people will definitely stay with you. Let me tell you, if you do well, if, they, if your people see you to be doing well, eh, you don't need security people. You don't need security men around you. They'll protect you. i give you an example. If you go to Mary, Mary is part of the central district that was represented by the late um, Senator Ifan yes, Yoba. Yeah. I can tell you for free that in Mary as of today, it's on morning mood. I can, I can tell you that that place will continue to mourn that man for a very long time. Because that guy single-handedly made the Navy what it is. See, Anambra is Abgaya, but that man has single-handedly won elections under a literally unknown party, YPP. For two consecutive times, you can tell that truly he was actually popular there. A man of the people. He was a man of the people. Let me tell you something. If you are with the people, these people will not. If you are with the people, the people will definitely stay with you. Now, uh, hold your thoughts, comrade Ro uh, Richard Romanos. This morning, would also like to feel the pause of Nigerians. Uh, we also advise that anywhere you see our correspondents, do well to lend your voice. Uh, let's feel the pause of Nigerians in the streets and let's begin with the FCT as ADBN correspondent Naomi Oloribe is currently on a roving report to bring us updates as this story develops. Hello Naomi, good morning to you. Can you hear us? Now, whilst that connection is tethering, do well to also join us on our live feed as well where you can share your thoughts if you're following the program this morning on uh, our website www.adbntv.com forward slash 
live. We're also live on YouTube as well. Hello, Naomi. Can you hear us? Yes. Good morning. All right, Naomi. Thanks for joining the program this morning. We're in the studio. Let's fill the pause. What's happening around where you are? Uh, give us updates. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Bito. The update this morning is that the atmosphere is still most likely that the, the, the youth and the residents of the FCT are going in and willing to go on with the process. Your call credit has been exhausted. Now, Naomi was also covering part of the visit of the FCT minister to the Bari and Kwali area councils, and she did file in news reports. Uh, whilst we look to establish that connection, we'll also look at some of the reports as filed in by our correspondent in the FCT, Naomi O'Leary Bay, who covered the FCT minister's call for more increased participation with youths in governance, with the inclusion of a directorate of youths in the six area councils that make up the FCT. Now, and I did caught you shortly to see if we could get her thoughts on this, oh, yeah. but it's a, a developing conversation from her intro. You hear that some youths, despite engagements with the FCT minister, mm. are still looking to hit to the streets tomorrow. Well, whether they hit to the street or not, like I said, what the minister is doing, so long as the FCT is concerned, is should be sustained. You get? Yes. Whether the protest um, holds, goes ahead to hold to hold tomorrow, the minister must continue to engage with young people. Yes. You know, whether you like it or not, what he's doing is having impact, and it must have impact. That's the dialogue that that most that people is are dialogue. calling for as, all as, this while. Exactly why I am saying what Minister Ines of Uke is doing in Abuja. Yes. Other ministers, for God's sake, for God's sake, we have other. 40 ministers, yes, or close to 40, about 40 or so, in this administration. Yes, how many states do we have? 36, 36 states of the states. federation. Yet, it's only in the FCT that the minister let these guys let, let, let these guys go back to their various places where they come from and interface with the people. For but but now, it seems like all, all, all members of the House of Representatives are here in Abuja. Senators are here in Abuja, ministers are here, are here in Abuja, ministers ministers are here in Abuja. Say, uh, House of Rep members are here in Abuja, other top government functionaries yes, are here in Abuja. There's tension, there's there's Abuja. tension brewing in, in all parts of the country. Yeah, there is tension brewing in all parts of the country. Let everybody go back to their various places where they come from and interface with the people. Tell people this is what government is doing. This is what we have done. We know that there is hunger. We know that things are hard. But even the president, you know, does not like or, yeah, he's not in tandem with what is happening. He's working so hard to ameliorate the sufferings of, of, of all of you. Now, very quickly, let's see if we can reconnect with our correspondents in the field. We'll also have accompanying reports as filed in following some of these engagements which have been noted as being necessary, especially with the dynamics of things at the moment. Hello, Naomi. Nice to have you reconnect. Kindly reiterate what you were saying before you got cut off. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I was saying earlier that the atmosphere in the city center, um, um, according to most residents, is that a great majority of them are willing to proceed with the protest tomorrow. According to them, demonstration, peaceful demonstration is the right of every citizen. And it gets to a point when you have no choice but to come out and exercise your right. On the other hand, in rural areas of the city center, sorry, the rural areas of the FCT, like Buari Area Council, for example, most of the indigents, most of the indigenous youths there are willing to have a dialogue. They would rather sit down and have conversations with um, the, um, the, the government rather than going on protest. According to them, this current FCT minister has this current FCT minister has, is the first minister that has come close to, to, to them to get to know their plight, understand what they want, and look for ways to work towards it. So indigenous youths in the rural areas, most of them are willing to have dialogue instead of protest. But if you come back to the city center around off here, you will, you will see that majority of the youths are on the opposite side. They are willing to protest. They are willing to protest tomorrow, and they are also willing to go for as long as it wants to. Well, well, Naomi, uh, we all know that uh, security has been beefed up in uh, the city center of Abuja, 
And you rightly pointed out that in the suburbs like Buari, Kujie, and Guagualada and the rest, uh, the, the youth out there are still insistent on going, on hitting the streets to protest. What is the security situation in those suburbs? Uh, are, are we seeing um, security personnel all stationed in strategic areas? W what is it like out there? Okay, um, if you go to area, for example, yesterday, there were there was a lot of security presence in Kwali Area Council, even though there are not like huge ups of, um, of security outfits in strategic areas, but there was a sense of um, 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 a great number of security presence in Kwali Area Council. That can also be extended to Buari. There's a lot of security presence too. But all the same, like I said earlier, the uh, words from the youth in the rural areas, they are saying that they want to dialogue as it stands now. They, they are saying that they have, because the minister, Barry Sanyas from Wiki, has been having a series of town hall meetings with them and they've been having conversations. So they have reached the point that they have concluded that they would rather dialogue than protest. Um, there are reports that we might start seeing heavy presence of security um, presence in the FCT from this evening up until tomorrow morning as in the city centre. Now, thank you very much, Naomi. We'll uh, take a look at your report shortly and then we'll come back to you as matters continue to unfold. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Now, I don't know if we have the report ready, but would look to take the report and have more correspondents joining from across the Federation to give us updates. We'll also be looking to join our Uyo Bureau shortly and also in Patakot, and uh, not forgetting Bayelsa as well, with correspondents on standby. We also have Lawal Aliu from Sokoto on standby to join us, and once we establish that connection, we would have him on the show. Uh, talking about the consultations yesterday, I don't know what would have images greeting the screen on the consultations, as rightly pointed out by Naomi. The emphasis is on dialogue by the youths in Kwali and Buari Area Council. Care to make any comments on sure, that? Sure, like I said, like I said, um, dialogue sh should be the way out. Dialogue should be the way out. And I will continue to insist that what Minister Agnes Wike is doing should be replicated across the country by his colleagues in the Federal Executive Council. They should all go back to their various states where they come from to do this interface. Yes. Our senators should go back to their senatorial districts to do this interface. House of Rep members, go back to your other constituencies to do this interface. Mr. President should open more his doors more, you know, to dialogue. Call, call, continue to dialogue with critical stakeholders. I mean, we have seen him talk with traditional rulers. Let him call, leaders, call religious APC leaders, governor. let him call APC, I mean, governor. Apart from APC, I, I have only seen him meeting with APC governor. The other, the other position governor, dialogue with them too. You know, youth groups, students groups, let him, as a matter of, if you, if you ask me, if you ask me, there should be a, a statewide pro broadcast. President Bola a statewide Tunubu, broadcast, I, I thought as well as yes, that, although. President Bola Tunubu should do a, pre, a, a statewide broadcast talking directly to the people. What about the people whose traditional rulers were not represented at that meeting? What about the people whose religious leaders were not represented at that meeting? And, and states where the and governors, states where were, governors were not represented in that meeting. Who talks to them? That is the point, for God's sake. Now, interesting dynamics as there are more calls for dialogues with the call on the president to also embark on a statewide broadcast and address Nigerians. Now, it is important to note that opinions vary. Dialogue has been buttressed further by Comrade Richard Romanus. Some persons are still insistent, owing to the report from our ADB and FCT correspondent, Noemi Oleribe, who was present yesterday as youths in the Kwali and Bari Area Council engaged the FCT minister on some of their needs, with an urgent call for increased participations of the youths in governance. Let's take a listen to the report, and we'll come back to more conversations this morning. Please stay with us. At the meeting... Representatives from the six area councils expressed frustration over the long-standing marginalization of indigenous youths in the FCT. They emphasized the need for a public complaints commission unit in each area council 
which would provide a formal platform for local youths to voice their opinions and ensure their concerns are heard in governance processes. We are not just coming here to come and lament. The good thing the minister have done, we will say it because it's visible. But what is disturbing us, we must also say it out. With the view that the minister will hear it and we know him, he will take absolute and uh, uh, a very serious urgent action. We want to say that on the issue of appointments, we are all product of history. We will not forget that in the history of Abuja, sir, Bari Area Council has been one of the most marginalized area councils in the FCT. The youths called for reforms to ensure that land allocation processes favor local indigents, thereby fostering a sense of ownership within the community. The minister, Barry Stanyasam Wike, acknowledged the grievances of the indigenous youths and warned against the discrimination of non-indigenous people living in the FCT. I agree with you. The issue of land is a problem in Abuja, even as I sit as the minister, it's like when you're a minister, what you came for is to just allocate land. <laughs> Out of 20 problems on my table, 18, land, land, land. <laughs> I now ask them, if these lands are all allocated, where will the inhabitants stay? Okay. Where will they stay? <laughs> so, don't think you are more worried. I am worried. And I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight it. So, don't worry yourself. You have somebody who will stand by you. You have somebody who will stand with you. Because I know what it means. Barry Sawiki appealed to the community to abandon plans for a protest, emphasizing that strategic dialogue would yield better. Now, a report filed in by Naomi O'Leary Bay, who was present at the integration between youths and uh, the FCT minister in terms of their yearnings. He has also asked that they shelf the planned protest tomorrow as he is looking to implement some of their calls. Now, let's also cross over to our Northwest correspondent, Lawal Alihu, who is joining us from Sokoto this morning to give us an update of what it feels like in Sokoto. Particularly in Sokoto, it's also been with the call from the state government to suspend academic activities in schools uh, just in case the protest holds tomorrow. Now, whilst we're looking to establish that connection, be reminded that you two are invited to join the conversation on X at ADBN underscore TV. Remember to use the hashtag and bad governance when you join the conversation. Hashtag Morning Express so we can have some of your feedbacks coming in. Hello, Lawal. Good morning to you. Can you hear us? Yes, good morning. Nice, Ito. nice to have you join us, Lawal. Please bring us up to speed. What's the situation report in Sokoto? Yeah, um, though today is rainy, but um, um, two days back there was a show up by the uh, joint security personnel in Sokoto um, to show uh, the protesters that they are ready to to uh, shelf the protest. But uh, there are growing calls from uh, various Islamic scholars in, in Sokoto uh, calling on the youths to shun the protests. And uh, just yesterday, that uh, the chairman uh, network for good and uh, bad governance yes. um, called for the withdrawal of, um, of the protests in Sokoto. There are quite a growing numbers of calls from uh, prominent people in Sokoto, even at the Traders Association um, to, for the youth in Sokoto to actually uh, shun the protests. And um, with this growing call, a lot of associations in Sokoto are withdrawing from the protests. And, uh, but there are quite a number of people within the center city of Sokoto who are uh, agitating for the protests within the center city in uh, uh, in the last 24 hours. 
Now, now, Laurel, you mentioned that uh, stakeholders have asked uh, the protest planners to show off their plans in the state of Sokoto. Uh, we all yes. know that uh, uh, the state has particularly been rocked by a lot of security challenges in the last couple of years. Uh, yes. Are these calls made from a point of view of maintaining the sanity of uh, the security situation there, or are yeah. they are they calls made otherwise? There, there are calls uh, to maintain the security situation, just uh, as the uh, chairman, uh, Traders Association Sokoto, informed the group yesterday that uh, some hoodlums are trying to hijack the protest to uh, break shops and loot properties. Um, so uh, part of the concerns are security reasons, that there are people who are planning to uh, join the protest to loot uh, properties and break shops. Oh, okay. Well, well, in in this in this situation, uh, we've we've seen other states, uh, particularly in Yobe State, in Jigawa State, and even states like Adama, where um, their governors are either asking uh, the the people there not to protest, but rather to pray, or they are telling them that there will on no accounts be any form of protest. What are the yeah. comments coming in from the Sokoto State Government, uh, governor yeah. particularly, if there is any? Just um, two days back, uh, the governor had a meeting with uh, the youth associations and other Islamic scholars in the state, uh, telling them to shun, pro uh, shun away from the, the protest. Part of the calls uh, from the government was uh, to make sure that uh, the Islamic scholars preach in their various uh, mosques and uh, places of worship. And um, youth organization and uh, non-governmental organization were there too, and they have been advising a lot of uh, youths in the city through radio programs, through uh, um, engagement, youth engagement. They have been trying to uh, make sure that the, the governor's call uh, rally round to the youth of Sokoto. Already, uh, some of the youth are saying no to the protests in Sokoto because the governor has already met with all these uh, uh, organization, youth organization in Sokoto. But there are quite a number of people who are saying no to the call uh, from the government and they plan to go on with the protests. Uh, as of now, this morning, a lot of people, even uh, you, you go around, sample some opinion, uh, you see a lot of people saying, we need the protest. But some, of, uh, uh, some people will say, no, we don't need, we need dialogue. Uh, so that uh, things will get better. Well, well. finally, uh, to get your thoughts on this, how about the palliatives that have been uh, sent out to various states of the Federation? Uh, what is the situation yeah. like in Sokoto State? Have people uh, begun receiving uh, these bags of rice, or w what is the situation like there? The only, the only thing I heard um, is the uh, uh, donation of uh, the already uh, sent uh, fertilizer, from the federal government. It has been distributed to farmers in the East and local government, and uh, uh, the government is still planning to uh, distribute the palliatives uh, to quite a number of people in Sokoto. All right, thank you very much, um, uh, Lawal Aliu, for sharing thank your you. thoughts with us this morning. Thank you. Well, coming back uh, to you now, uh, Honorable, a lot of developments coming in both from the FCT and uh, you know Sokoto State as you rightly heard our correspondent over there saying that uh, the same calls that are being made here in the FCT are also being made in Sokoto State for the protest plans to be shelved by the youth. Yeah, of course. I like I said, like I said, dialogue should um, dialogue should be the way forward, you know, and. Um, uh, I would continue to encourage, um, encourage um, uh, most of our leaders, yes. you know, to dialogue with our young people, dialogue with youth, dialogue with uh, my 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 generation. Yes. Because I mean, we are all youth, you know. Um, things are actually hard. Things are actually really really hard, you know. So. 
Dialogue is the way out. Dialogue is the way Well, there's another twist uh, to this uh, development uh, captured on the front page of the Nigeria Tribune. Before I get your comments on this, let's take a look at the front page of the Nigeria Tribune newspaper this morning. Uh, just beneath the masthead there on the front page of the Nigeria Tribune, you'd find the catchphrase, Planned Hardship Protest. FG declares prisons red zones. Now, this is all I'm going to be taking on uh, the front page of this newspaper. Talking about prisons, we've seen uh, situations in the FCT where uh, the prison in Kuji was, you know, the, there was a prison break and a lot of ten, a lot of escalations happened then and uh, the entire city was put on security a lot. You're very, you're very, you're very correct. Yes. You're very correct. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, oftentimes when um, when uh, uh, things like this happen, yes. you know, the government tends to concentrate more on the urban areas, you know, uh, sometimes forgetting the yeah, rural the areas, rural you know. So I am very, very happy with um, uh, uh, what the federal government has done by declaring the prisons as yeah, um, red zones. Because, of course, you discover that most of, most of the time, that is where you see most of these guys, you know, breaking out from there, you know, to cause havoc, you in know, the in the city. Center. Not, not, not sometimes not in the city center. Even the you suburbs. Know, even there. the suburbs. Even the, the planned protest that is coming, you know, I expect that security should be even more in the rural areas because most of these hoodlums, most of these guys who think that they may take, most of these guys would like to take advantage of the protest to wreak havoc on even the local um, Bamba put seller. The local um, shop owner, who has you no know, business, who has no, who has no business with, with the agitations, you know. So that is where the security should even be more, you know. So for me, that is that is that is that is it. Now we've largely dwelt on developments informed by the planned protest nationwide for tomorrow, August first. But it's important to note that we just have time for one more local paper this morning as we turn our attention to calls from the Director General of the World Trade Organization. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela, who has raised the alarm over the future of global trade, highlighting the need for digitalization and a shift to a green economy. Now, this is captured on our last paper, on our review focus this morning, The Business Times. You'd find that story beneath the masthead, global commerce going through troubling times. DGWTO says, says future of trade lies in services, digitization, green economy now it's of concern that this is not just the issues in nigeria alone there's widespread hunger across the globe and she's coming from the aspect of the need to leverage on technology green economy and many are looking at green economy as back to the nigerian context a reversal to when our mainstay was on agriculture the challenge is what we're going to talk about later on the show but in terms of beefing up security to help farmers get back to their farm do you think that the current administration can... You, you see, everything boils down to... No matter how you try to run away from this protest <laughs> or bringing this um, protest to this conversation, yes. you just definitely cannot. It boils down to, it boils down to uh, providing the farm, a farmer in Sokoto, a farmer in Zafara. You providing know, security. Providing security. Yeah! Do you understand? Yes, now that is it is it is what it is. So, so you're you're, 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 you're saying that the lack of security in these regions or in these states, mm. uh, which has adverse effect in the productivity of of uh, farm yield, definitely is also what is causing hunger, and in turn, the hunger is causing the agitation. What are you saying? I come from I come from a rural place. All of us do, yeah. which is largely agrarian. Which is largely agrarian. Which is largely agrarian. You get. See, let me tell you, um, uh, this guy of uh, portable, portables, portable says, portable says, uh, after God, it is government. After God, it is government. Have you not seen Dangote, the I mean, African billionaire, yeah. the richest man in Africa? The man was literally crying on on national TV because of what government policies. Is it not true? Yes. That is how powerful the government is. So the, 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 the government has the power to uh, elevate the sufferings of people in this region. It has yes. the power to elevate people why, in this why region. It also we, has the power. Why are we not seeing them doing it? That is the problem. As a matter of fact, 
Is it not part of the reasons why people are, pro are, 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 are planning to, to protest? protest? Yes. It is. It is the reason why people are planning to protest. Okay, and let me also use this opportunity to ask a simple question. Why is the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs still on that lock and key six months later? That's a big question. That's a big question. At a, at a time like this, why is the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation still on that lock and key for over six months? For your opinion, comrade, what do you think should be the way out? For God's sake, if the former minister or the yeah the suspended minister Beth Aibu, if she has submitted an unpardonable administrative offence, let her go. Sack her and replace her with somebody else. That ministry is very important at a period like this. It is important at a time like this. Do you know that? Since our suspension, do you know the number of uh, social intervention programs that have been affected? Over 15 social intervention programs have, have been affected by her suspension. Nothing is working. Apart from this uh, uh, conditional cash transfer scheme, no, no one program is working. Not one, not one, not one is working. Just because of her single suspension. Now, you understand? we'll come back to matters of the day as time is f fast being spent. Let's see if we can get one more correspondent join the show. Uh, we're looking to cross over to Nasarawa where we have Michael on standby. And if we have Michael on standby, let's see if we can get a situation report coming in from Nasarawa. Hello, Michael. Good morning. Can you hear us? Whilst that connection is uh, still buffering, it's important to note that uh, when we come back, we'll also touch on some publications to give you insights into foreign stories on our foreign newspaper but let's see if we can still try one more time to get michael to join us on the show hello michael good morning good morning nice to have you join us on the show can you give us a situation report as to the developments of things in your area okay um once you look at the strike is the general thing that's going around the country but um relegating it to national states um i thought on friday when governor abdullah actually touched down uh, from a trip to China, business trip to be precise. Uh, he convened a security meeting comprising security operatives, um, traditional rulers, civil society organizations, the religious leaders, and he made it clear that um, he's actually doing the needful in the states. So he sees no reason why individuals should actually take to the street and to protest. Uh, because of recent, he's been commissioning um, some road projects in various parts of um, the states. Well, immediately after that meeting, as at um, Friday, um, the local government chairman also stepped down that same information, organizing um, different expanded security meetings. However, most of the individuals that attended these meetings are heads of various organizations. But the one that caught my attention was the market association. Because for them, um, their fears are clear. If these individuals protest and it goes south. Their shops will be the first targets. However, the police at the time yesterday released a press statement and they made it clear that um, they'll be protecting those that will be protesting. However, if the protest is being hijacked, then they'll be clamping down on those that are trying to cause mayhem in the society. I was in the capital at the time yesterday. And I was made to understand that um, the security operative are actually trying to clear out um, the organizers by the roadside because of the tires, because they don't want anyone to take advantage, start burning tires. And if you see the state capital, as at this moment, the soldiers are on the street, the police are also on the streets to make sure the proposed and planned and protest for 1st of August doesn't go south. That's just the clear indication right now in Nasser State. But in terms of those that want to protest, most of the clamor in Nasara State is just on the social media. There is no group that has come out and visibly to say, well, we are going to be part of this protest. It's just the normal social media talk. On the radio or be it, um, the brokers, uh, or rather um, looking at the TV stations, most of them calling to say, okay, we want to go for the protest. However, I spoke to some individuals on a one-on-one -on -one account, and they were just say. I don't think this protest is going to hold. If it's going to hold, it's to be maybe states like um, Lagos or looking at the federal capital territory. However, it is just the normal social media talk for people in Nasrallah State, majorly. 
Well, we must thank you, Michael, for a very robust description as we debriefed you on the situation in Nasarawa State. We appreciate you. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, this is as much as time will permit for us to delve into a review of local stories at this moment. Thanks to Comrade Richard Romanos for taking our time to objectively discuss developments greeting the papers today. Thank you. Thank you.